Okay, I said earlier that uh, question nine was a classic probability distribution question for a section B, extended answer problem, and this is why. Parts A and B were all about the normal distribution. When we move to parts C and D, we're now talking about a binomial distribution. It's a really common approach to use a normal distribution to generate a probability and then to use that probability as a binomial distribution in the second part of the question. So we'll start by writing out the distribution of the variable. I'm going to use y for this variable, and I'm actually going to use y1, and you'll see why later on. Um, it doesn't matter, we'll just call it y though. And it's distributed binomially. Uh, we have 12 flights, so there are 12 flights, and we know the probability of it being on time is 830, um, because that was given to us in part b. So calculate the probability that at least seven flights are on time. So that's the probability that y1 is greater than or equal to 7. And your GDC will answer that for you. Don't forget it's the continuous binomial distribution um, because we want greater than or equal to 7. Um, part 2, they're really throwing the probability stuff at you here. Given that at least 7 of these flights are on time, find the probability that exactly 10 flights are on time. So we've got A. Um, and B, and we want the probability of A given B. So this is a conditional probability question. So it's worth writing down the events. A is um, Y1 equals 10. That's exactly 10 flights are on time. B is the thing we know is that Y1 is greater than or equal to 7. So our probability of A given B is the probability of A and B happening. That means they both happen over probability that B happens. Now in this particular question, A is the probability that exactly 10 flights are on time, and B is the probability that at least 7 are. Well, A can't happen without B. A is a, a subset of B, if you like. B has to have happened. So the probability of A given B, uh, sorry, A given B, the probability of A and B in this case is equal to the probability of A. In this case only. It's not a general rule, but in this case it is because um, for A to happen, B has to have happened. So this is just the probability of A, and that will get your answer there. Um, for D, um, we now change. We now have 20 flights a week, and this is why I used Y2 uh, for this event. And we know that this is distributed binomially. N is 20, there are 10 flights, but we don't know the probability. It says calculate the probability that a, a flight is on time. That's what we're being asked to count uh, to work out. We do, however, know that the probability that y2 is greater than or equal to 19 is 0 0.788. And that's what we can use. Now, they've chosen 19 because it's very close to 20. Um, this is really common again. It would be one different from the number of trials. Or it could be 0 and 1. And you'll see why I mean by that in a moment. Because we have to do a bit of manual work here. It's testing whether you understand the individual terms of the binomial distribution, not just putting it into your GDC. So we want the, the probability that y2 is greater than or equal to 19 is the probability that y2 equals 19 plus the probability that y2 equals 20. Um, we can add these because they're mutually exclusive. You can't have ni exactly 19 flights on time and exactly 20 flights on time. These are mutually exclusive events. We stop at 20 because, of course, there are only 20 flights, and the only possibilities are 19 and 20. Right, the probability that 19 flights are on time is 20C19. Lots of different ways of writing this out. That's the way I was taught, so that's why I'll do it. Um, P to the power 19, and then the probability that it's not on time is 1 minus P to the power 1. And the probability that exactly 20 flights are on time, 20C20, p to the power 20, and then 1 minus p to the power 0. Anything to the power 0 is, of course, 1. So you now need to evaluate um, all these uh, factorials, all these um, NCR values, combinations, um, simplify these, tidy them up. 1 minus p to the power 1 is, of course, just 1 minus p. Um, rearrange, you end up with a polynomial, and then I recommend you use equation solver, or perhaps your graphing tools, to solve that equal to 0 0.788 and you'll get a value of p to three significant figures.